we are talking about the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that, you know, even after the theme, I know it's our second month now, uh, even after the theme is over, let's, let's not stop engaging on this theme and let's not stop the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Make it your daily um, practice to have the Holy Spirit involved in your life. Talk to Him, pray to Him. You know, just make sure that you don't um, stop uh, entertaining Him in your life simply because we have stopped talking about this particular theme. Amen. So even when you pray, I was telling them earlier, uh, Epinoni, that you know, the, one of the models of prayer that I use is, 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 is the model of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, based on uh, that scripture, uh, the, may, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, I use that, you know, praying about the love of God, the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, you know. Because, you know, you, I don't know about you, for me to pray effectively, I have to have some form of a model that I use to pray. Otherwise, I just don't know what to say. It's like after five minutes, I'm done. It's like, okay. <laughs> so models help me. You know, it's like even the, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, that can be a model that you can use. Uh, our Father uh, is a prayer point. Who art in heaven is a prayer point. Hallowed be thy name is a prayer point. Thy kingdom come is a prayer point. That will be done. It's a prayer point. So you can pray there for two hours. You know, just taking it, the, the, the full armor of God is a prayer model you can use. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, the, 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 the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the kettle of truth, the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Those are prayer points. You can pray for two hours. Just praying. Don't just say, Father, I thank you for the helmet of salvation. I thank you for the breastplate of righteousness. I thank you for the shield of faith. I thank you for the kettle of truth. I thank you for the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace. I thank you. No, not, not, not like that. You know, we just take uh, one, one point. You know, I thank you for the sword of the spirit, Lord. Your word declares that your word is like a double-edged sword, Lord. I thank you that, oh, Father, your word is alive, you know. Uh, and then you, 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 you unpack it just like that. And, and even Alama prayer points in Tumela or Nixin, you can incorporate them within the model that you are using. Because I know some of you, you just take those three prayer points, you pray for three minutes, one prayer point per minute. Then you are done in three minutes. Hi, <laughs> Uh, or even on Wednesday, maybe some of us are even more confused. You're like, number one. And you were praying. You thought you were praying for two hours. You opened your eyes on the screen. You are still on prayer point number one. You're like, hey, you know, you're like, Yala ba 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 number two ke yala ba 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 sang mbonge kwa nelo unkulunkulu Jesus orubona ngat pa ipozi le samwe otai mklambe i istaki le kanta i sasa kuwan i etai mi peli le i etai mi i tata yom tanda zi peli le amen so so pray pray. Um, such prayers and, 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 and involve or engage the Holy Spirit as you are praying. So today, we are continuing with part two of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not just want to lie dormant on the inside of us, but he wants to manifest. manifest social media. Let us allow the Spirit of God to manifest in and through us. It is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit found in 1 Corinthians 12, that the Holy Spirit manifests in our lives. Are we here, Vazalan? Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12, but we are reading from verse number 4. The Bible says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. 
but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. So to each one of us, the Holy Spirit can manifest, right? And, th and through these gifts that we are going to be talking about. But it says for the profit of all. So people must benefit from you being gifted. The gifts of the Spirit in you must benefit other people. They must also benefit you as well. But most importantly, they must also benefit those who are around you. Are we together, Bazalan? So, so, so it's very important for us to allow the Spirit of God to manifest through these gifts so that, you know, uh, people can just benefit from it. And most importantly, not just people, your life, your family, you know, can also benefit from the fact that you are allowing the Spirit of God to use you or to manifest in and through you. And what I like um, most importantly is that the Bible encourages us to desire spiritual gifts. We might say that or we might think that the gifts of the, of the Spirit are maybe for uh, pastors or apostles uh, or prophets, but, you know, each and every one of us, uh, the gifts can manifest through us. Are we here? And the Bible allows us to desire the spiritual gifts. Amen? First Corinthians 14 verse 1, it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So not only are we supposed to be not ignorant, not only are we supposed to be knowledgeable when it comes to spiritual gifts, but we are also supposed to desire them. So God gives us the right to desire to be gifted spiritually. So it's not ungodly to desire to be gifted spiritually. Uh, the um, uh, Amplified Version puts it this way. It says, pursue this love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church. So you, 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 you are allowed to, to earnestly desire, to yearn to be gifted, just to be like, wow, God, if you can use me, you know, um, in this way, uh, for as long as my motive is so that people can benefit from it. Are we, are we together, Bazalan? And, and it, 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 it says, I love it because it talks about pursuing love first. And that is, that is the most critical uh, part of it. That if you want to be used by God, um, especially through these gifts, you need to understand. And especially if people are supposed to benefit from it, you have to walk in love first. Because sometimes God might want to use you uh, to minister to somebody that... As far as you are concerned, they don't deserve the kind of ministry that uh, you are supposed to give to them. Can you imagine if God gives you a, a positive prophetic word to a person that you don't like? It's like, not this one. <laughs> God says, tell this one that I love them. You're like, not this one. <laughs> God, I'm also updating you today. You hate this one. You don't love them. You know what I mean? So... Let's pursue love, um, and the Amplified says, make it your goal. Let your goal be love first. Make it your goal that you are going to walk in love so that, you're, you know, Jesus, even when he ministered to people, he was moved with love and compassion for people. To see, when he sees them tormented, to see them sick, you know. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, um, um, post that I normally see on Instagram of another young girl who is sick, you know, the sister is trying to raise funds for her. And each time I look at that picture, I was saying to myself, as a matter of fact, for the past, that maybe, um, you know, I must like Peter say, you know, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, just to take it upon myself to pray for that young girl because she has cancer, you know, some extreme kind of cancer. And each time I look at that picture, you know, my heart breaks down. I'm like, God, you know, she needs a miracle from you, you know. And, and I was saying to myself, probably I must just, you know, spend days just praying for her. Because that is the first thing that needs to happen. Your, your heart has got to be touched uh, uh, for people before you can minister to them. You know, if you don't have a heart for people, then you, you will not even care whatever that they are going through, even if you are gifted to minister to them so that they can be helped. Are we together, Bazalan? So we, we said then 
there are nine gifts of the Spirit that are mentioned in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 12, through which the Holy Spirit manifests. There are how many? There are how many? And these nine gifts can be divided into three different categories. Are we here? The first category is the category of the revelation gifts, which is what we spoke about last week. Amen? And the first gift out of the revelation gifts is the word of knowledge. And number two, it is the word of wisdom. And number three, it is the descending of spirits. I was saying earlier that if maybe there is a gift that I can say to you under this category, pursue it more, it is the descending of spirits. You know, in this day and age, we need to be discerning because there are a lot of manifestations that are happening out there. There are many supernatural. I always say God is not the only supernatural ent entity. The devil is also a supernatural entity. And the only way that you can tell whether that manifestation is from God or not, it is when you have discernment. Amen? So, so that we can be able to uh, perceive whether or not uh, whatever that is happening is from the Spirit of God. Uh, I always tell people that there's nothing amazing by telling somebody uh, information about, uh, you know, um, uh, that cannot be known. Um, how can I put it? There's nothing amazing with just telling somebody or their address and there's nothing really amazing about that. It's, it's, it's amazing because Ah, well, it, how can this person know this? But it's, it's not amazing in a sense that even the devil knows what you ate, he knows your ID number. The word demon means a knowing one. So the devil is well informed about what is happening. So don't be just surprised and yield to somebody simply because they gave you the correct facts. That does not mean those facts are from God. That's why last week I was even saying, Hillcrest, that sometimes you can read your star sign. It can tell you something Accurate, right? But that does not mean it's from God. As a matter of fact, Satan uses such pieces of information to deceive you because he tells you something right to eventually take you to something wrong. That's why I always have a problem with words of knowledge that are not prophetic in their nature. You are giving me the right information, but there's nothing prophetic with what you are saying. I'll explain that next week. You are giving me a word of, and in most cases, most, you know, sometimes people give, flood you with this, you know, information in terms of word of knowledge, but there's no word of wisdom in it. And most, and, and even worse, it's, it's not prophetic. I always say that, look, simple example, you can receive a word of knowledge, let's say in a dream, can you imagine if, you, you, you see in a dream, you see me in a coffin. Right? And you come and you say to me, How do you think I'm going to feel? Like, it's not a nice thing. Then what? I mean, you, 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 you are leaving me fearful. Like, I mean, nobody wants to see them in a... I mean, really... In a, you, you know, uh, you know and, and you're just telling me that information. And, and here's the catch. Let's say, God forbid, next week, Vele, Nyashona, and, and then the next thing, Umuntu Funwezi post that, and I'm jail. I mean, then what? Do you think God can just give you that information just to prove how prophetic you are and use my downfall in the process? So in other words, this thing had nothing to do with me. That's why even last week we said God reveals to redeem. There's nothing prophetic about, about just... I mean, yeah, then what? You, you, you know what I mean? So before we have information, just, just ask God, why is he showing you that? Before we have information, why would God just go through such drama? It's like, okay, fine, fine. Let's even look at the positive one. We are fear game. Your ID number is 
da 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 It's like, wow, it's correct. Then what? Why did God show you my ID number? Is, is, it, is it to prove your prophetic gift? Or is to show, the, the Bible says, yeah, for the benefit, so what do I benefit, Mina, from you knowing my ID number? What, what, what's there for me? Give me lots of numbers at least. Only the ID number, I know it already. Even now, I can tell you my ID number. I can talk of it. I can pick it somewhere. Of course, man, I love what, 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 what else can you give me? At least thing, nigga, my lot can do with 33 million at the moment. So, if you are just going to stop there, just leave it. Go and pray and ask, why did God show you my ID number? Because sometimes God can give you that. I always say such information is for, um, it's an added something. It's when God, for an example, maybe he wants to prove, he wants to show you that it is him uh, talking, right? But the goal is not the ID number. There must be something. And then it's me talking. Your ID number is this. Just to show you that I know you. But don't just give me the ID number and walk away. It's like, it's like Shaili Zanga, wow, you know the ID number, you know the address, then what? I can, I can give you a homework. Go and study those prophecies. In most cases, they're like, I see in the realm of the spirit, your address is 813 Villas Street. Ah, I see. When, you, when I get in, there's a fridge. When I open the fridge, there are, there's a chicken. When I open the chicken, there's, there are bones. When I open the bones, there's marrow. And I zoom in and I go to your bedroom and I see, you know, your, your, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bed in your corner. On the next corner, there's a, what what? There's a vase, a yellow vase with flowers. Oh, go deep, papa. Pa. And I go under your bed and I see there are two pairs of shoes. One is black and one is white. Oh, wow, go deep, papa. Pa. Don't worry, God is with you. Oh. Just for me to know. Did you really have to go? Why can't you just say, I see, even when you wake up tomorrow, you are going to wake up and when you turn, there's going to be a yellow car. Somebody's going to open a window and give you 20,000 rands. Hallelujah. It's like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Next year, this time, this is what is going to happen. You know, at least give me something that is taking me to my future. I can't do anything with my fridge that is a chicken and bones and marrow. That is a fact that is existing. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> At least tell me, eat the chicken. Oh, the chicken is poisoned. Don't eat it. <laughs> Why would God give you that information? Just to show me, sir, your ministry. Then that's it. Let's not waste time. I'd rather hear a sermon. Than that cream cream cream, <laughs> that higi <hiki> haga. <laughs> Amen. The second category is the power gifts, which we are going to talk about today. Number one, gift of faith. Number two, gifts of healings. Number three, working of miracles. In the third category, we said gifts of utterance. Right, and these are gifts, other call them gifts of inspiration. Number one, prophecy. Now, you will note that prophecy is under the category of gifts of utterance or inspiration. They are not under revelation. So prophecy in its simplest form does not have to reveal any new information. So sometimes things that we call prophecy, they are not really prophecy. Number two, different kinds of tongues. Jesus. Number three, uh, interpretation of tongues. Those are the three different categories with three gifts each. Last week we dealt with the gifts of revelation. Today we are talking about the power gifts. The power gifts. We, God deliberately gives us power gifts because the Bible says the kingdom of God is not in word only, but it is also in power. It is not in word only, but it is also in power. And that's why God gives us these gifts so that his power can be displayed. Are we together, Barcelona? So even when we preach the gospel, 
it is going to be incomplete without the demonstration or the display of the power of God. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5 says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And when we say power, I don't want you to think about, you know, so many other strange things that we normally see out there and people call them the power of God where it does not even change lives. It does not even change anything. Are we together, Bazalan? So empty and powerless messages or sermons don't change lives. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4, Paul says, And my speech and my preaching were not persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So it does not mean that when I'm preaching, you know, I can't demonstrate the power. Here Paul even uses this illustration to show how the power of God can be displayed even through preaching, especially if it imparts some form of dimension in your life. Are we here? Not just empty words, not just motivation. There are certain miracles. That's why even God himself says, I have sent my words to heal your disease. So you can experience even the power of God through the word that is preaching. So in other words, when we are preaching and teaching, we are not just teaching out notes. The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That's why even Jesus Christ himself said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. When they were listening to Jesus, they were so amazed saying, you know, he, when he teaches, he is teaching with some level of authority. Understanding that he is not just a lecturer, you know, dishing out notes or prepared notes, but there is some life and power that is released whenever he opens up his mouth. So even when we are preaching and we are teaching, it's not supposed to be just empty words. That's why sometimes you can be looking at somebody preaching and you can think, you know what, I can do, I can, I, my, my, my message can become better than this, you know. And I, 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 I acknowledge many of us are not so much so eloquent speakers, you know, as a matter of fact, sometimes I, I, I listen to myself and I'm like, hey, my goodness, I should have just, you know, rephrased that and put it better. But the most important thing here is the impartation behind what is being said. That's why the Bible says God, you know, upholds everything. He puts it in its, in its place through the word of his power. Are we here? So God can convey his power through his word. So it's not about just yeah, putting together notes and sermons. It's also about allowing the power of God to, to be released. So we must be a generation that believes in the power of God. We must be a generation that declares the power of God. We must be a generation that is not embarrassed to trust God for things that only his power can accomplish. Are we together, Bazalwan? Why is this? It is simply because we must acknowledge that there are people who will not believe unless they see the power of God at work. There are people whose hearts are going to be hardened. They will refuse to believe in anything that we are saying unless they see the power behind this God that we are talking about. Remember, other people that we are trying to preach to, they have experienced some form of supernatural manifestations where they are coming from. So if all that we are bringing is just, you know, presentations and whatever the case may be, then we are, we are, we are it is going to be difficult. I always say to people, Bazalan, it does not take convincing for people to be saved, but it takes conviction. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit, that while I am preaching, the Spirit of God can touch people in a manner that even I myself as a preacher, I will not understand. Sometimes when you preach, people start crying and it's almost like you want to ask them, why are you crying? <laughs> because I've just said something much more. But when you said something, the Holy Spirit did a work in their hearts. 
and touch them in a manner that no words can ever touch. Are we together, Bazalon? So there are people who will not believe. The Bible says in John 2, verse 23, now when he was in, in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs, which he did. They believed when they saw the signs. So as we are preaching, we need to believe God and trust God for signs and for wonders, for, for his power to be displayed. You know, and this is the part that I love. You know, from time to time, we pause, and that's why we have your Ignite uh, 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 experience, and that's why, you know, I love it when we go out and preach the gospel on the streets. We pray for the sick people. We cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ so that people can also experience the power of God. From time to time, we need to experience the power of God. We need to see it at work. And, and, and most importantly, Barcelona, in a real and a practical way, not just so that si figanje, si wisa, nebesa si tai, amantla angkul kulu buwakona glendao, but nothing else is happening more than that. People are not getting jobs. People are not experiencing breakthroughs. You know, curses are not broken off of the lives of the people. We must experience the power of God that is going to, at the end of the day, remember the Bible says, these manifestations are so that we can benefit from them. So after I have fallen, the question is, what did I benefit? And I'm not saying it's wrong to fall. Of course, you know, the power of God becomes so overwhelming sometimes, you know, to, to the natural body that we can, and that's why we fall. Just in case you, you wonder why. Because I've seen people who say, no, Mina, I will never. And I've seen people who say, maybe by us push. And I'm sure you've noticed here at church that when I'm praying for people, I, I push no one. I push no one. You know, I try to be as gentle as possible. So that, but sometimes our natural bodies can't handle that because when the power of God or the Holy Spirit manifests, your natural body will... And I've seen people who, who you can tell that this one has decided I'm not going to fall. And for some reason they fall, right? But, but that, is not, that is not the end. It's a means to an end. That beyond that we should be expecting that there is some kind of work that is happening in our hearts. So we need to believe God. We must not, Barcelona, get to a point which our gospel will just be empty. You know, we are just, you know, gathering every Sunday, give each other notes, notes and then go back home and not expect God to, to do something miraculous in our midst. And that's why I love the power gifts. They are for that God has given them to us and it's up to us, Barcelona, whether we are going to take advantage of them and apply them and engage them in our lives so that we can see the power power of God at work and so that we can, you know, benefit from it. If you are a believer that is not expecting some form of a supernatural manifestation in your life, you are missing out. If you are not experiencing some form of miracle, you just want to come to lectures every Sunday. There's nothing supernatural that you are expecting. Ah, you are deceiving yourself because even Nabantabanga Kolo, they believe in miracles. They want miracles. That's why people will go to, you know, to consult uh, uh, with, you know, so many people out there because they, they want, they know that there are certain things that I will never experience in my life unless there's some supernatural intervention, which is what a miracle is all about. That's why people will take, you know, tender documents before they submit them. Ayolala Samwe, Gamamus Banban. Why? Because they know that the ink on the paper is not enough. <laughs> Land of finally humble or something like that. Amen. So when you are a Christian and all of a sudden you come from that world, but all of a sudden you think God does not, as a matter of fact, anything that the devil does, he copies it from God. He copies it from God. He saw good in the natural and the isindo that are not normal in the natural. Amen? So believe God for miracles in your life. You know, look for, look for or, and expect the power of God to be at work. And I want us through this gift just to see how you can engage the power of God in your life. Just through these gifts. And just, just, just be that kind of a person who will say to yourself, because let me tell you, <laughs> this is life. In Bidole, you, you will get to a stage in if, you have, if you have not experienced something like that already. There will be certain 
stages and levels in life where you will realize yourself. I want to I need a miracle. Where you realize, good, there's no education that's going to help you. There are no connections that are going to help you. There, there's no, you, you, you are moneyed. Where you realize, even my money will not help me. That no human hand can fix. Only the power of God. So I'm saying if therefore you are a believer who is not expecting the power of God, who is not expecting miracles in your life, you are going to miss out on a lot. Because at some point you're going to be stuck in life. Why young kid, you've done everything in your part. You went to school, you have good English, you are smart, you are intelligent, but nothing is moving. It's like you, you even wonder, what, what's going on? What can I do? But that's why God has given us these gifts. So that we can engage them and experience. Now, the very first one, and I pray and hope that your hearts are going to be opened in this. The very first one, the very first power gift that I want to talk about, it is the gift of faith. Say the gift of faith. One more time, the gift of faith. One last time, the gift of faith. Now, take note, Gebazalon. The Bible says, you and I are supposed to walk by faith. The Bible says, we walk by faith and not by sight. And this is the kind of faith that comes by hearing. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So when God speaks, faith comes. When God speaks and we hear, faith comes. Are we together? And that, is, that kind of faith is available for each and every one of us. So when we hear the word of God, we develop faith at different levels. You know, we can develop what we call or what we can call saving faith. And this is when we hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached to us. What do I mean by that? It is when we don't yet have a relationship with God, when we are not yet born again Christians, and for the first time somebody comes, tells us about Jesus, tells us why he died on the cross, why he came, why he died, why he rose again. And when we hear that, then faith comes to believe in what they are saying so that we can be saved. That's why Ephesians 2 verse 8 says the following, it says, for by grace we have been saved through faith. So that is the kind of faith that brings us salvation. But also we have faith uh, that I call living faith. This is the faith to live by. This is the faith that we engage each and every day where the Bible says the just shall live by faith. That after we have received faith at the level of believing in the finished work of the cross, we begin to believe in biblical principles that are being taught at church. And when we hear God speak to us in that way, we apply our faith, we are mixing the word with our faith so that we can see or produce the results behind the principles that we are hearing each and every day. And that's why each and every day when whoever we are hearing someone's being preached at church, we are not just going to take them as notes, you know, but we are listening to God speaking to us. Why? So that faith may grow and increase in our lives so that we can live by it each and every day. But we also develop a fruit called faith, according to Colossians chapter number 5. But there is another dimension of faith that the Bible calls the gift of faith. Take note that specifically the Bible does not say that this one comes by hearing. But it says that this one comes as a result of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
This is when God deposits some kind of faith that is not easy to understand, not easy to process. He deposits some kind of faith deep down in your spirit. Pastor Kenneth Hagen calls it special faith. So this is no ordinary faith, but it is the special kind of faith. In other words, it is the different kind of faith from saving faith. It is the different kind of faith from the, you know, living faith, the, lay, the faith that we live and walk by each and every day. But the Amplified Version calls it a, a wonder-working faith. This is the kind of faith that you need when you desperately need a miracle in your life. This is the kind of faith that when the Spirit of God begins to stretch you, you begin to believe God at another level. The, 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 uh, the, the, the New Living Translation calls it great faith. So in other words, this is no ordinary faith. This is the kind of faith that you need to engage at another level when you want to believe God for great and greater things in your life. Are we together this morning, Basalwan? The easy translation it says the same spirit causes other people to trust God strongly. So in other words, yes, all of us trust God. All of us believe God. But there is a place that you can reach in your walk with God where the spirit of God is just going to provoke you to begin to trust God, not just in an ordinary way. You begin to trust God in a ridiculous way. You begin to trust God in a manner that does not even make sense to the people who claim to be living and walking by faith each and every day. So in other words, you can sit down with another Christian who is speaking in tongues like you do, who is believing God like you do. But all of a sudden, when you begin to share things that you are believing God for in your life, they look at you as if you are crazy. Why? Because this is no ordinary faith, but it is a special kind of faith. It is the wonder working faith. This is the faith that provokes me to step out of the ordinary realm of walking by faith and begin to be ridiculous in the way that I believe God, to begin to do strange things that no other Christians will do in the name of faith. And I pray this morning that that kind of faith will come upon your life to begin to provoke you to believe God at another level where you refuse to remain ordinary, where you refuse to remain where the rest of the believers remain, but you choose to believe God for more in your life. You choose to believe God for greater things in your life. There is what I can call personal faith that comes by hearing, but there's also another level of faith where when another person shares something together with you, you will develop faith, but there's also corporate faith that when I'm in a room and there's a spirit of faith in the room, I can believe God at another level, but I, I am here to tell somebody there is another dimension, which is the dimension of the gift of faith, where the Spirit of God Himself will just grab you and arrest you and cause you to believe things that are ridiculous, things that are not making sense to you, things that are even confusing you, things that after you have confessed that kind of faith, you go back home, you are scared, you are afraid, because even you yourself, you don't understand what you have just declared. And I am here to provoke somebody that may this gift of faith be at work in your life. Because let me tell you, there are other kinds of miracles that we will never experience in our lives unless the gift of, of faith is at play. I always tell people that in order for you to build and do great things for God, you need faith. But I've realized you need no ordinary faith, but you need great faith. You need a miracle working kind of a faith. You need some kind of special faith to be at work. Pastor Mike Todd calls it crazy faith. Say the gift of faith. Say the gift of faith. Say the gift of faith. There's a certain level that we can never reach in our lives unless the gift of faith begins to kick in. This is when you begin to believe, things, believe God for things that other believers will not even dare believe Him. It is a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit whereby as a believer you are empowered with special faith or wonder-working faith. It is the 
gift of the Spirit to you as a believer in order that you may believe God and receive a miracle. Here's what the gift of faith does. The gift of faith receives a ridiculous miracle for you. In other words, you use it to transact with God at a dimension that other people are struggling to access. But when the gift of faith kicks in, then you are able to receive a ridiculous kind of a miracle in your life. This is the kind of faith, Barcelona, that the Holy Spirit gives to us when we have to believe God for a ridiculous breakthrough. General faith is for general miracles. You know, it's like when you, yes, receiving a job can be a miracle, but this is the kind of a miracle that I can refer to it as a general kind of a miracle because I will explain it in, the, in a moment. It depends on the already existing ingredients in order for it to bring about that kind of a miracle. But this kind of, a, of, a, of, of, of faith that I'm talking about, the gift of faith, believes God for impossible miracles. So in other words, even when you realize that it has to be a miracle, but even you yourself realizes that this miracle seems impossible for it to happen. But only the gift of faith can take you to that level. That when other people begin to say, yes, we must believe God for miracles. Yes, we must believe God to do things in our lives, but not at that level. That's why you say, I am beginning to switch to operate to the level of the gift of faith. I am believing God for the impossible. I am believing God for something that even believers do. Do you know that many of us are unbelieving believers? We believe to a certain point. I mean, when you say, I believe God for a job, it's easy to say. Because <laughs> you know there is a company somewhere that somebody has already started. <laughs> and and they, they will, yes, it's a miracle. But there's a company somewhere that already exists. That, you know, if I apply well, yes, I'm believing God for a miracle for employment. But if I apply long enough and I persist and I pray, yes, that miracle will begin to take place. But there's another level of a miracle where God does not have to depend on already existing ingredients. It was good when Jesus was praying for people who were blind. And, 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 and because they had a condition in their eyes that caused them not to see. <laughs> but Jesus had to switch to another level when a man born blind, not because he had a condition in his eyes, because he did not have eyes. This is where then the creator in him says, this time I'm, I'm not healing eyes, but I am creating eyes. This is when I'm going to spit on the ground, begin to create eyes. In other words, even when they say there is no company that can employ you in Delmas so that you be with the qualifications that you have. In other words, God can bring an investor, my goodness, to come and build that company. Not because he wanted to build it, but simply because there was a gift of faith that was pulling an investor from America to come and plant something in Delmas just so that you can be employed. Shout the gift of faith. Shout the gift of faith. I, I am praying this morning that may we get to that level as believers where we are not just going to live and walk by faith. We are not just going to operate under the spirit of faith, but we are going to operate at the level of the gift of faith. That when other believers are saying this is where, because let me tell you, the gift of faith kicks in when you are at the end of your faith. The gift of faith... Jesus, let me tell you, Barcelona, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. So there is a faith that you have, but there is a faith that God has for you. That's why he deposits it by his spirit. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. You did not, you did not have to do anything for it. It's a gift. This is when God comes on the inside of you and he causes you to believe him for the ridiculous. Shout the gift of faith. Shout the gift of faith. This is the kind of faith that will make you or cause you not to look like an ordinary Christian. 
you will look like the crazy kind of Christian. Because that's why then the Bible says that any carnal or natural person cannot receive the things of the Spirit, it says. Because they are foolishness to him, it says. But it says, and, and, and it says they can only be spiritually discerned. In other words, before you even know that that kind of a miracle exists for you, you have got to switch into another realm of the supernatural to begin to see things which are not as though they are. It's a gift. May you get into that realm. That you will walk into a, an impossible situation. But you are going to receive a miracle through the gift of faith. You are going to see possible things in an impossible situation. You are going to see a way out where other people have given up. And they are saying we can never be able to reach that level. But the gift of faith is going to provoke you. Not depending on what you have. Not depending on your background. Not depending on the already existing existing ingredients but depending on God himself shout the gift of faith I don't have time but I want to get into details but, but let me just sum it up like this the gift of faith works hand in hand with the gift of working of miracles the gift of faith receives a miracle but the working of of miracles works the miracle because the Bible says faith without works is dead so even at the level of the gift of faith you will receive a miracle but you will have to work it let me provoke somebody in this room. Many of us, we are sitting with big miracles. We are sitting with ridiculous miracles. We are sitting with something that God has deposited in your spirit. At some point, you believed God for something ridiculous. At some point, you believed God for something big. You don't know why did you believe it. You started speaking about it because it was so real in your life. Let me explain what faith is, Baselwan. The Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I, I don't know, Bazalwan, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to be able to explain this. Another translation says, faith is the title deed. So in other words, I can come to hope and say, hope, you have a house. Hope has not seen the house. Physically, that is. Hope has not been to the house. Hope does not know the color of the house. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. As I say, hope you have a house. She can have a picture in her head. And she can believe that she has. But she can, at the back of her mind, leave room for disappointment. To say, I might not have the house. But as soon as I give hope the title deed in her hands, she has not seen the house, she has not been to the house, but she has the house. The title deed says the house exists, and two, the house is yours. So when the Bible says faith is the substance of, so in other words, faith makes what you are believing God for to be real and tangible before it happens. That's why it will never work for you to try and explain to somebody something that you have perceived in your spirit. And your faith is at work. Because your faith gives you the, it makes it like, faith makes it, as I'm holding this microphone, faith makes my car and my house and my job and my business, it makes it real like I'm holding this mic. But unfortunately, as you are sitting down, you are not holding this mic. This mic is not as real as it is to me. So faith, the gift of faith, receives the miracle. So in other words, you don't know why. You feel like, just lend the corn. Mpilaguyo. Because the Bible says, Kunezinto ezises when elgamoya, which are more real than the things ezila, unnatural realm. 
And you can only access them through faith. So the gift of faith receives the miracle. And like I said, many of us here, we are pregnant with miracles that we have already received. This thing was tangible. This thing you were experiencing. This thing was real to you at some point. But you thought that's all it takes. As long as I can sense it, as long as I can feel it, we did not get to a point where we had to work the miracle. I'm going to explain it in a moment because faith without works is dead. So it made you at some point to feel like I was crazy. That's why I had to give up at some point because this thing, I felt it, but it was not coming out. Because you did not take it to the next level of working the miracle. Let me explain it in this way, Basalwane. That when Jesus at the wedding, I'm, let me start with this one where the gift of faith was at work in the mother of Jesus. And Jesus had to work the miracle. John chapter number 2, the wedding in Cana. Jesus attends that wedding. I don't know whether he was invited or not invited. But the real thing with that story is that the wine runs out. The gift of faith kicks in, in the mother of Jesus. And she begins to say, they have ran out of wine. He speaks to Jesus. Jesus does not have a company that produces wine. Jesus was a carpenter and not someone who is making wine. But the gift of faith in Mary says, this one can do something about the situation. But because the gift of faith had not yet kicked in in Jesus, Jesus looks at his mother and says, woman, what does this situation have to do with me? It's not even yet my time. But the gift of faith insists in Mary. And she says through the gift of faith, whatever he tells you to do, you must begin to do it. And then at that moment, Jesus has no choice because the miracle has been received. The miracle has been deposited. Jesus has to work the miracle. And he says to them, take the jars, pour some water in it. And the Bible tells us that the water began to change into wine. Why? Because he was working a miracle. He was working a miracle. Sometimes what you are doing in the natural is activating a miracle for you. And it will be a crazy kind of act. Because Jesus, what does water have to do with wine? We said, wine has run out. Why are you causing us to pour water? It's a natural thing that I am doing to work the miracle that I've already received. And let's take it to another level. Jesus in John chapter number 11, he comes, he meets sisters of Lazarus. They give him the information. Lazarus is about to die. He's sick. The gift of faith in Jesus says, the sickness is not unto death. That is the gift of faith as work at work. And then he continues with his business. But then this situation becomes worse. Lazarus dies. Jesus receives a report that Lazarus is dead. The gift of faith in him says, he is not dead, but he is sleeping. By the time Jesus arrives, they are saying to him, you are already late. This man has been dead for four days. The gift of faith in him begins to kick in and he says to them, I am the resurrection and I am the life. The miracle has been received, but he cannot stop there. He needs to work the miracle. And he begins to work the miracle and he says to them, take me to where the grave is. Now I'm working the miracle. I have already received it, but I have to work it. Take note, Jesus' prayer. When he arrives before the grave, he does not ask for a miracle because it has already been received. He says, Father, I thank you that you hear me. And he says to them, remove the stone. Why? He is working the miracle. Lazarus is still dead behind the grave, but he's working a miracle. I have applied. They have declined. I'm going to call them back again. 
The job is not there yet, but I am working a miracle. I started a business and it failed. I'm going to try again. I am working a miracle because I have received a dream. I have received a vision. I have received an idea. I believe it's gonna work. I see it in my vision. I see it in my dreams. I believe I'm a multimillionaire, but give me a chance. I am working a miracle. Give me a chance. I am working a miracle. Give me a chance. He says to them, remove the stone. They say to him, you don't understand. The stench. This man has been dead for four days. He says to them, remove the stone. And they remove the stone. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus. Lazarus wakes up. Come, and then he says to him, probably they were panicking, thinking he's a ghost. He's still working a miracle. He says, remove the grave clothes. Many of us have received the miracle. But we are waiting on God to work the miracle. But God says, I've given you a gift to work the miracle. Can you imagine if Jesus kept on saying, he's not dead, he's sleeping. Wait, he's going to rise up. That's why they even tried to comfort Jesus with his gift of faith. And they said, no, we understand that at the resurrection, every one of us. And Jesus says, no, that's not what I'm talking about. The man is going to wake up now. And many of us are like that. We received miracles. And all of a sudden, we are changing. We are changing the language to try and suit and cover for the embarrassment. Because what you said was big. And it's not happening. So can you imagine if Jesus said, no, he's not dead. He's sleeping. Let's just wait. They were going to wait until the second coming. And they were going to probably say, oh, this is what Jesus meant. No, it's not what he meant. He wanted him out of the grave now. That's why he had to work the miracle. Let's take it a notch higher. Jesus comes to a place walking with his disciples where it was already late. People were hungry. The disciples say, Jesus, there is no food. These people are hungry. Let's send them back home. Jesus receives a miracle, gift of faith. He says, ask, check, what do we have? They bring a report. We have two fish, five loaves. There's 5,000 plus people that we need to feed. Impossible situation. Jesus, gift of faith. Takes the bread, gift of faith. Breaks the bread. He's working the faith now. Blesses the bread. Gives it back to them. Take note. As they are working the miracle, starting to give. Now, when he was still talking to them, there was still two fish. Five loaves. But he had to work it. And then he says, start feeding the people. As they were feeding people, the bread multiplies. The fish multiplies. The miracle. So can you imagine if Jesus said, let's wait on the Lord. I know these people are going to be fed. Oh, probably he's going to do like Elijah and send the ravens. Let's wait. While God was saying, no, you have to work it. You have to work the miracle. You have to break the bread. You have to bless the bread. You have to give it back to them. That's how the miracle is going to unfold. And probably there's someone here. You are pregnant with a miracle that is overdue. But you stopped when you did not see any sign. Your prophetic word today is rise up and work the miracle.
When my wife was believing God for a car, she had to work the miracle and build a car pot. Bought things to wash the car. That was not there. Why? She was working the miracle. She perceived it. She says to me, she was reading, I can't remember, maybe it was Isaiah something. And when she was reading that, she received. Bam. And she knew God is going to bless me with a car. But she had to work it. Built a carport. Bought things to wash the car. Lo and behold, months later, the car came. Even when we were blessed with the Mercedes Benz when we were married. When we were leaving our home, going to Deben, not knowing what's going to happen because we we're going for an assignment to go and preach. She says to our helper, because we had one car and on the one side, and she says to our helper, clear up this space. My car is going to park here. Both of us didn't know that we were going to come back with a car. Many of us are pregnant with businesses that we gave up on. Because it seemed impossible, but you felt it. You sensed it. Many of us are pregnant with houses. That were so real, God even had to visit us in dreams and showed us. But you stopped at that. I'm here to tell you there's another side of that gift. It is called the working of a miracle. This is when faith will provoke you to do ridiculous things. Because only you can see it. Only you can sense it. If it were not for the gift of working miracles, we were not going to be sitting in this building. Because after we saw the sign outside, I sensed it, received a miracle. This is our building. I had a choice of saying, Let's just pray, Bazalon, and wait on God. Shanda Rabasambarama. We're waiting on God. Something is going to happen somewhere. But God had to provoke me to say, work it. Put in the offer to purchase. Money was not there. They wanted a deposit. When they accept, they wanted a deposit. It was not there. But we had to work it. Behave as if. We already own it or we already have the money. Fast forward, that's why we are sitting here. Because sometimes there are things that you are going to face in life that are going to be impossible for any natural means to solve. That's when you need to allow the gift of faith to kick in. And as God pushes you, listen, it begins with receiving it. When you perceive it in your spirit, it's like, wow. Here is this building, bam. Here is this business, bam. Here is this job, bam. Rise up and work it. Work it, persist. Persist. The Bible says that woman who was praying, Knocking on Jesus, when Jesus was talking about prayer, making an illustration with that woman who persisted, knocking and knocking and knocking. Until the person said, you know, this person is irritating. And then Jesus at the end, he says, we ought to pray and never give up. And many of us, we try once. And this thing does not work. That's why I can't, be, I can't remember this story fully, but there was a man who was instructed and I think he did it three times and he stopped. And the word to him was, oh, if only you continued. Until, you even remember how 
when Elijah tried to pray for that child who died. He had to do it a couple of times because he knew I have already received the miracle to raise this one. He had to continue working the miracle. Don't stop until you get that job. Don't stop until you build a successful business. Don't stop. If you have perceived it in your spirit and received it in your spirit, it's already there. All that remains is for you to work it as a power gift. This is when you insist to the devil that the situation is impossible. As a matter of fact, devil, you made it impossible. But the power of God in me refuses for me to accept it. I'm going to continue to work it. So that even when, because this is even where the gifts of healings come in. Because all of these three gifts can work together. Now when, when you, as a Christian, you can wake up tomorrow and they can tell you, you have a sickness that is impossible to heal. God forbid. You don't just panic and sit down. You need to know there is a God in the Bible who says, I am the Lord who heals you. And there are gifts that he has given for various kinds of healings. The Bible says, we shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Go after that promise. Go after that promise. And speak to that sickness that, because you are the one with the power of God. I don't care what kind of virus might be in your system. You need to dictate to it. I remember, I always tell you this story, how my daughter was diagnosed with asthma, chronic asthma, as they said, said it. And they wanted to operate on her. They wanted to operate. The, the gift of faith in me said, no, I'm not willing to open this door. And to work that miracle, I had to say to the doctor, discharge her now. We are taking her back home. She fought with me because she said the situation is critical. She had to be taken to theater now. But the gift of faith in me refused. But I can't explain how I felt at that point. Probably I will not repeat it. Probably now I'm thinking to myself, that was a crazy thing to do. But the gift of faith kicked in, did not allow me to just allow that operation to take place. I said, discharge her now. They gave us a long list. We must remove a carpet at home. She must not eat this. She must not eat that. They gave us a list of about 32 things that she must not eat. Gave us a pump, big pump like this that she's supposed to spray every morning. When I came back, I said to my wife, we're doing nothing out of what they said. Threw away that spray. Threw away the list. Did not remove a carpet. To this day, she has never had one asthmatic attack not even one not even one don't sit with a miracle on the inside of you and not work it work it don't sit on a miracle many of us here can tell you now there are big miracles that we are sitting on why because we panic we think ah you know i it can't happen you 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 know and when god moves us to do crazy crazy things to produce crazy results i was saying epinoni exen my prayer is that as a leader and as a pastor, God, help me not to become a hindrance to a person who is operating. Listen, when a person is operating at a gift of faith, look, even now you won't understand. It's like you will, you will know I, I'm spiritual, you know, I understand spiritual things, but Leaco does not make sense. Look, it, it's never meant to make sense, to make sense anyway. And my prayer is, God, please help me not to. When somebody's operating with this kind of faith, help me not to. As long as they have received the miracle, let's stand on our feet. Let's just lift up our hands and begin to pray in the spirit in this place. Just 
for a few seconds. Le baro de suke palon de rusa tele bekoya. Ma le baro de sote lukal pare vades kenji se tere benote sozike de. Me le beruta zake lamanda. Ma ze le bero de sukatile. Ma zo le baro de zuka tale bero de besuka taren de se tere de ya. Palo vredos can jose tal benato ze kutar bena sotero de kel pano varen de site. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you in this place for miracles that are received. We thank you for breakthroughs that are received. We thank you for healings that are received. We thank you for signs and for wonders that are received in this place and activated in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are expectant that even as we step out in faith to work different kinds of miracles, O oh God, that our oh master results are going to come for you are a miracle working God. You are a promise keeper, Lord. You are mighty God. Our light in every dark situation that we may be faced with. Father, some are suffering from different sicknesses and diseases. Today we pray for supernatural healing to come upon them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ in a mighty way. We pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, even for that young lady suffering from cancer, Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that by your power in the name of Jesus you, you may work a miracle in her life. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ that, O oh Master, in the name of Jesus, whatever condition that she's suffering from that has a name, it will bow down to the name of Jesus. We pray for her healing. We pray for her healing. We pray for her healing, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many of us, oh Father, pregnant with miracles, jobs, businesses, breakthroughs, oh Father, that only you can instigate, oh Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that even this day we may walk out of this place in the name of Jesus and experience these miracles. May they be real. May they be tangible in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in our lives. May they manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. In the glorious name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. Above every situation and circumstance. Above every needs, we give you praise. Lord, we vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And if you believe it, Give God a big hand of praise in this place.